Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this topic. I'm, I'm William Wang, and I'm the, I'm the maintainer of Volcano Community and from Cloud Cloud. This is my partner. Sure. Uh, my name is Li Mengxue. I come from the Force Paradigm. Okay. And today, our topic is cloud native batch computing with Volcano. Uh, we, we have some updates and the uh, future roadmap sharing in this topic. So there are four parts. The first, the first part is, is about the Volcano intro, introduction. And then I will share the updates and the improvement uh, of Volcano community. And the third part is about the GPU sharing and isolation from my partner. There will be uh, deep, deep depth. And finally, I'm going to uh, share the community and the roadmap. So, here is the overall Volcano architecture. Uh, from the picture, we can see that uh, Volcano community have strong, strong relationship with the upstream computing frameworks like uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Spark, Flink, and so on. And also, we can see that Volcano is not just a scheduler. So it has the pod group and job group controller to provide the enhancement job, enhanced job management. And also it has the queue CRD to help user to share their resources more efficiently. And also we have a lot of, we, we spend a lot of effort to work with the analyzing hardware to support different kind of heterogeneous devices such as GPU, S86, uh, Ethernet, NPU, TPU, something like that. And also we, we work with the Kubernetes team to improve some, in, in, some, some performance, especially for the AI workload and Spark workload. So this year we will add two more components in the architecture. First one is the Volcano Agent. The Volcano Agent is, is designed to provide the uh, queues management for the, for the workload. And also we will, we will add a new component named the rescheduler. So this rescheduler will work with the promisers, promisers monitor system to balance the resources more efficiently in Kubernetes cluster. Here is the, the, the general of Volcano. So in, at the beginning we support we support, we, 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 we designed the, a, a set of batch API to support the AI workload running on the Kubernetes. And, uh, and then we supported the pod group, the, the, the queue, CRD, and provide a set of uh, scheduling policies for big data area, like the fair, fair share scheduling, the resource reservation, to prevent the resource competition between the Spark driver and the workers. And then we have received a lot of feedback from the community users. Uh, so they, they said uh, there are so many kind of uh, training operators. So it's hard for them to maintain all these kind of operators. So we enhanced the, enhanced the job management to support, support the Volcano job API to Unify the unify scheduling the all kinds of training frameworks, and then today uh, we are doing a lot of work to support the uh, large language large language model training and inferences. So today I will share some some new features at this area. So the first feature is, is, is the job flow. As, as we all know, the workflow is very common requirement for some traditional uh, batch workload and the AI pipeline. So there's a lot of projects like Argo, the, the Airflow, the Kubeflow. Uh, still some users come to the com community, said they need a lightweight job flow workflow or workflow scheduling uh, engine. And also they need the more complex 
a more complex workflow engine, just like this. So in, this, the, in, the, uh, in the picture, you can see that in their use case, they need the workflow support the if-else or switch case symmetrix. So we, we, we designed this new project. It's a lightweight workflow management. Here is the example. There's two CRD for this feature. The first one is the job template. User can define their job using the job template. And the, and the third one is the job flow. So user can define the, the dependency between the jobs in the job flow. The next new feature is the load awareness scheduling and the rescheduling. So we can see that uh, uh, in, your, in, your, in your cluster, we, we all know that the, the utilization for each node is very different. So it's, we expect the usage on, ever, on each node is, is balanced. So the, 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 the basic reason is that currently the request and the node allocatable resource is scheduled, is scheduled, is scheduled. And uh, the, the next reason is that uh, the pod goes away from time to time, and new pod is, is created from time to time. So it's hard to keep the resource balanced on each node. So in this feature, we, this feature, we support the volcano scheduler to communicate with the monitor system like uh, Prometheus and the ERK system. So the, the scheduler is awareness of the, is awareness of the, the, the usage of each node and scheduler according to the usage. The next one is, is, is about the capacity scheduler. As, uh, as we all know, we cannot support the proportion scheduling several years ago. The, prop, the proportion scheduling is, is very flexible. So it can share the resources among different queues based on the weight. And also the scheduler reclaim resources by the weight automatically. And when the user, when the user scale more node into the cluster, the scheduler can keep the ratio all the time. It's very helpful and uh, flexible. But also we have some use, use cases that the user said that they want to they want, uh, configure the resources and share resources by their configurations. So we supported the capacity scheduler policy in Volcano this year. As you can see, the policy is, the policy is, is support, support user to configure the, the maximum resources in the queue and the capacity and the capacity resources in the queue. And also we, we support the reserved, reserved resources in the queue. So these three kind of uh, definition support the fine-grained scheduling and the reclaiming in the, in the scheduler. Here is a use case from the LinkedIn. They have super large GPU clusters and they use Volcano and use Q to share resources. Uh, but in their production environment, they have multiple organizations in their cluster. And for each organization, they have the different kind of GPU resources, such as 800, 800, and T4, something like that. So how to use the scheduling scheduling and the share resourcing mechanism to share the resources and achieve a great perfect resource utilization is a great challenge. So they, they tried a lot of approaches. Uh, at the beginning, they used the solution one. They used the resource quota to, to, to do the isolation, but the resources not, can't be reused efficiently. And then they used the proportion policy. They configured the weight for each queue mapping to their organization. But the, the, the resource utilization goes up, but still something can be resolved. 
something like that. The, the resources uh, the resources about the V100 and A100 can be shared fully uh, uh, among their different uh, organizations. So we supported the deserved the resources uh, based on the each di each dimension of the GPU, GPU, like like the the red part. After this, after enable this feature, their production environment. The utilization uh, have goes up and uh, and achieved good result. For other part, we this year, this year and later last year, we improved a lot of minor features. The first one is about the we enhanced the scheduler to support micro services, and uh, and currently user can move their default scheduler to Volcano. In the cluster and smooth and very smoothly, and also we enhanced some some other features, such like keep the uh, keep the scheduler work with the auto scaler more more efficiently, and also we add uh, add some new small features to to help prevent the prevent the 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 the, the, the job from from preempted uh, in some in some conditions. Next one is about the collocation. There's, there's more and more users. They, they are deploy their different kind of workload into one cluster, such as, such as coexist the Spark application and the long running services, and also coexist co the, the training workload and the inference workload to achieve better resource utilization. So, <clears throat> so we developed the colloc this this feature in Volcano we support the queues management and the and the resource over over commit to make you to make to make full use of the resources and also prevent the prevent the interference between different containers. This feature will hopefully will be will be released at uh, quarter two Q two. And next. There's a big feature about GPU sharing. My partner will introduce this feature and uh, and show how to how to use this feature and some and some more use cases. Okay. Thanks, William, and the Volcano community for inviting me here. I'm the contributor to this vGPU feature, and uh, it's, I'm glad to give you a deep dive about this feature. <clears throat> The background of this feature is the growing requirement of the computing power. As you can see in these figures, the requirement of computing power grows quite exaggerating, especially with the emergence of the large language models. As you can see with the red line, it can be as great as 375 times per year. In the meantime, GPU manufacturers has released GPUs with more rapidly, more rapidly with more computing power to match the trends, and of course, with a higher price. Another challenge is the device utilization in Volcano and Kubernetes cluster is quite low. Large amounts of computing resources are spoiled. The left two figures are the core and memory utilization of a single, single A100 GPU in a Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, <clears throat> the core utilization equals zero for half of the cycle, and the memory utilization is quite low as well. The major reason behind this scenario is the GPU-related resources can only be used in an exclusive manner. Our solution to, <coughs> to these challenges is to design a device sharing mechanism called vGPU. And unlike, and unlike other device sharing mechanisms, Volcano vGPU can provide device memory isolation among containers. In other words, we can enforce the upper limit of the device memory for each container to use. It is done by a component called Hamicore, which is uh, another open source um, uh, GPU sharing project. And you can see in this figure, at the scaling level, 
the volcano scheduler is responsible for grasping the usage of devices and uh, assigning tasks to, to appropriate node. Then it passes on to device plugin to mount the uh, uh, the Hamico and uh, the proper devices into the container, and it and the Hamico is, is responsible for the in-container resource control. And how do we achieve that? I mean, how, how do we contain the resources used in containers? Uh, we we use uh, we achieve that by using a component. Um, it hijacks the level search between the CUDA runtime and the CUDA driver. It records every memory allocation and retains an OOM error if it exceeds the limit. As you can see in this figure, figure if, we <coughs> if we allocate 3G device memory to this container, it can only get 3G when queried by NVIDIA SMI, just as, this fig, just as the figure shows. Besides memory isolation, it has the following other features as well like call, utilize, ut, call utilization limitation. It can guarantee fault isolation and is transparent to GPU tasks. Volcano V GPU is quite easy to use. Simply specify the number of GPU you wish to mount into the container by, by using volcano.sh slice VGPU number. And you can specify the device memory available for each GPU mounted using volcano dot sh slice vgpu memory. In this example, we create a container with two GPUs, each have an upper limit of 10G device memory. The result is showing in this figure. Volcano vGPU ha um, can improve the GPU utilization greatly in many scenarios. A-B testing is one of them. Let's consider the following scenarios. This is a typical A-B testing Mm, AB, AB, te AB testing solution uh, platform. It has the following features. The whole system consists of a base production model and several uh, experimental vari vari variant models. Most of the input is processed by the production model and a small part flows into the variant model. Without the help of the VCPU te technology, each vari variant model requires an exclusive GPU, which is a series based of computing power because the, flow, the traffic flows, is, flows into the variant model is quite low. With the help of working over GPU, however, the two variant models can share on a single GPU and they can leave the GPU completely idle for other tasks for use, to use. There are many concerns regarding the performance of working over GPU and we can safely assure you that the overall e overhead introduced by Volcano vGPU is below 1%. On the other hand, the throughput can be increased by 10 to 90% due, uh, due to the kind of task. It, it performs very good in the inference uh, scenario. And Volcano vGPU is officially supported in Volcano 1.8. However, there is still much work to be done. We plan to add a monitoring system in May 2024, and we plan to support multiple schedule policies in this summer. We also have a plan for next year, which is to be compatible with GPU operator and other heterogeneous devices like Intel GPU and AMD GPUs. Um, <clears throat> we are looking forward for you to try this feature and provide feedback to us. Thank you. It's a great it's a great feature in Volcano, so feel free to visit the Volcano to have a try. So the next part is about the community. So here, here, here is, here is overall, overall. For the public users, we have a lot of users' adoption, especially for the AI and big data, big data and uh, Gini and trust coding workload. Here is the here is the part of the adapters. For the code, code diversity in the last 12 months, you can, say that, you can see that we got good, good diversity in the community development. Um, almost more than 50% more than contributors are from, from the independent contributors. And also, here is the, the future. Uh, uh, the, 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 the major features 
the major feature we, we are going to work this year. The, in addition to the, the algorithm, in terms of AI engineering, the biggest challenges for AI training and inferences are the scale, the performance, and the cost. So this year, we can know we will focus on this, this aspect. The first one is, is about the topology of various scheduling. As we all know, in large model training scenarios, network topology is, and the task topology is very important. As the bottleneck has changed from the computing to the network. So the scheduler will be awareness of the, will be aware of the task topology, like the, the data parallels and the tensor parallels and pipeline. So, and also the scheduler need to be aware of the network topology, topology such as the RDMA, ME switch, ME link, and something uh, like that. So how to use the scheduler to schedule a set of pod with higher requirement for the bandwidth to a group of node with, connected with high speed network. It's very important to improve the training performance. And also for the inference, we will going to add more support for the resource sharing. Besides the GPU sharing, we will support the ascent MPU device sharing and, and, and some heterogeneous devices more. And the, the, second one is, the second one is about the AI training on multi-cluster. As we all know, the the model and the model is 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 becoming more and bigger and bigger. So, so the, the training of multi cluster is 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 a uh, is a great is a great trend, and we are exploring in in, in this area. And third one is about the ascent MPU support. As we all know, the the ascent MPU is very is more popular and popular. Uh, in some area uh, besides the GPU. So we will support the NPU sharing and the NPU topology scheduling, something like that. And last one is, is, is the collocation. So it, it is found that more and more users are trying to deployment multiple workloads to one cluster, as we, said, as we just said. So, so we will still work, spend a lot of effort on this area. Finally, the community will provide the broader support and optimization for the, for the other heterogeneous devices uh, like AMD and Intel. So there's still a lot of requirement from the community. Uh, feel, free to, feel free to get involved of community. Here, here are some resources. Feel free to go to the community to fair issues, fair the requirement, or make contributions with us together. We also have some, uh, we have the Slack, Slack channel. Uh, we can communicate, communicate there. So that's all from, from my side. Thank you. Any question? Okay, sorry. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I was wondering if you could explain a little bit about the co-location. So you're talking about you can have a mix of training and inference or a mix of Spark and let's say notebooks. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you're actually doing that co-location scheduling and how it's different from your traditional uh, batch uh, or fair scheduling? Uh, pardon? Are you, uh, are you seeing the co-location? Yeah, between long-running services and batch, and batch ephemeral jobs. You're saying that you have a new strategy around co-location scheduling. Can you walk through what that is? So if you go back to the slide, I think it's on okay. co-location strategy that you're introducing. Oh, I'm sorry.
this yeah, page? this one. Yeah, I was wondering if you can walk through that yellow section and how that enables both long running and ephemeral jobs to exist in the same uh, nodes or same cluster. So for the yellow part, the scheduler will be uh, aware aware of the the job priority, uh, like the online service priority and the offline offline job priority, and uh, and scheduler them with different uh, different priority and uh, preempt the resources when the resource is insufficient, and also the scheduler uh, is need to aware aware of the over-subscription over resources that report that reported by the volcano agent. The scheduler needs to schedule the, 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 the over-subscription resources to the offline, offline workload because the over-commit resources is not stable resources. So uh, we, will use, we will allocate this kind of resources to the job with, with, with low priority. So do I as a user need to provide higher priority for my online jobs and lower priority for batch, and that's my contract yeah. with you? Yeah. So all through just priorities, right? That's the contract that we have. Like we say priority class and priority like zero. Yeah, yeah, different priority class. So we will divide the job into five different, five different uh, kind of priority. So user can uh, define their job, just like the, 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 the latency intensive workload with the highest priority and then the normal, the batch, the, the free, they are, they are about five, five classes. Okay, okay, thank you.